Okay. I'm going to just prepare you guys right now uh, for the funniest heckle of your life. I, um, I've already had tears running down my face this afternoon. Just, uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to laugh at some of the stuff we're laughing about. So there's, there's one thing about this show is that there really aren't any rules. Um, I asked if there's anything inappropriate that Johnny didn't want to talk about. And uh, so we're leaving his mom upstairs. She's not going to come down and ask to finish the landscaping. But um, one of my, uh, my most hilarious encounters is uh, this man who played with, he sang and fronted and played guitar for Enough's Enough for over a decade. Uh, he was with LA Guns. He's uh, an accomplished solo artist. He's a graduate of Musicians Institute. And his girlfriend, Charlotte, is uh, banned to, uh, she can't speak on camera. She's just going to sit behind him the entire interview. So uh, with no further ado, my, uh, my illustrious friend, Johnny Monaco, thank you for being here. Kevin, how are you, buddy? I'm great, man. I'm gonna, we're going to pimp out Aces and Ales, Carrie Kelly's shirt, first of all, right? Oh, yeah. So, this is the only thing I could find to wear. It's, uh, oh, it's better than the uh, orange jumpsuit that you had last time I saw you. Oh, right? It. Yeah. <laughs> hair looks good. You got some quarantine hair going on. I spent, I spent hours I, for the interview. I, originally, I dressed up. I thought it looked pretty good, but it looked like I was going to like a graduation party or something. So ah. I just wanted to make it more rock. I love it. I love it, man. We, uh, and I see one of the mannequins has a mask back there. Is it? Oh, both of them do. So we're, 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 uh, Oh yeah. COVID. You yeah. Know. <laughs> I love it. This is good. They're, they're going, they're going looting in about 20 minutes. So I just oh. want to stick around for part of the interview. Oh my God. I, um, I'm so sorry, man. This is a really bad thing about when I talk to Johnny, but, um, all I have to do is just look at him and I start I start laughing. <laughs> That's we, good or bad. I know it's, it's great. That's why you get most of the phone calls for the gigs, right? It's not just that you're a badass guitarist and singer. I don't get any calls anymore. I've cut everybody off. Oh. I can't, it's like two minutes into it. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> you want uh, to talk to it more. God, if, um, if I can encourage people to, to get some humor in their life, <clears throat> they need to download. I think you can get it through Spotify and apple music right through itunes you can get the it's not me it's absolutely you podcast is that right yeah it's it's you can just go down to my page or uh spreaker okay johnnymonaco.com um, is where we find all this yeah, sure yeah that's right. um find everything on there Every, everything's on there for sure it's chronological right so they should start at the beginning go back to the first episode because uh, yeah I think there's a handful of them I, I thought it was going to be a, like I'm going to do these all the time and it's just it's so much editing and you know getting in there and figuring it all out and how it's going to go it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work so I, I, I've done a handful of them I like to do some more I just for a while I just didn't really have a whole lot to say you know there's uh, you could be like me and just do them every day not do any editing and don't think about it and just make them really unprofessional you that's know? how they usually well they're not unprofessional but usually they're that kind of a flow whereas I was trying to put it together like a show, you know, yeah. so it just takes longer to do it that way. I don't know if it's good or bad, but. Um, I love it. Like, thanks. If, if you go to the podcast, you can get, uh, you can get an idea of where Johnny was at at the time. So when you first started the podcast, you were in Enough's Enough, right? Was it towards the end? Uh, I, you know, that's a good question. No, I think it was, I think I started that way after, I think, just, right? Just, or no, in the beginning, you're right. It was like right in the, right towards the end. Yeah. It, so yeah. what, uh, I mean, a lot of my friends have seen you front the band. And so this is, that was your, my introduction to you anyway. You came through mm. Portland, saw you at uh, the Tonic Lounge. And you came through and um, if I remember right, there was some kind of like something that happened on the way here. There was some crazy deal. I don't think it had anything to do with Chip, but, but that venue was always kind of like, a, it was a, a sort of, it paved the way for, for like chaos. And so... Um, but that night, I remember hanging out, watching the show, being amazed that you really, you had a lot of sound for three piece, right? You're playing guitar, mm -hmm. you're singing, you really nailed the Donnie V funny um, vibe, but uh, you had your own thing too. So uh, mm -hmm. it's a, it, you, uh, you do a great impersonation of Don Donnie too. So if you feel like bringing any of that in, the, uh, did people expect you to have that vibe as you were fronting the band? Uh, I think they just, you know, they're, you're more, don't want to hear me sing them. They just like, you know, where's the guy that sings the songs. But, um, I just try to get as close as I could at the time, uh, without, you know, copying it too much, but yeah, I mean, how else can you sing those songs? Right. That's how yeah. they should sound, you know? 
Well, there was a Beatles influence, you know, in those harmonies. That was a big thing about the band that had, um, there was the glammy look, but the Beatles, the big stacked Britpop harmonies were huge. And that, I've heard that in your solo stuff too. So it's obviously an influence for you, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, we listen to a lot of the same people probably have the same kind of taste in that style, you know? Yeah. It yeah. goes back to way back from when they used to play in the clubs <clears throat> with bands like Off Broadway and, you know, a Pez band and uh, Holland and, you know, all those earlier power pop kind of bands, you know? So you were going out and seeing those bands early and yeah. Drunk. Yeah. I mean, that was a little before me, but I got towards the end, I caught it, you know? Yeah. But uh, that's, that was the, the sound of Chicago. It's like a pop sound, like a cheap trick kind of, they're from Rockford. Right. So it's like that, that whole sound was like a power poppy, uh elements to it like a beatles -y, like i think you know yeah no, I, you know your friend brad elvis and i were talking the other day and he uh, yeah he mentioned that same kind of thing i i didn't really think about that sound until about that you know equating that sound with chicago and illinois until i start realizing oh yeah like definitely cheap trick had that vibe and um but when you were you obviously you were gigging around there playing some music for a while is that how you you connected with those guys just Crossing the same I used to just go see them at the Thirsty Whale all the time. And then uh, I just had my own band at the time. And they, were, they needed someone to fill in. Like Gino Martino was the guitar player. Okay. And he had to go do something. And so they needed just someone to fill in for. And uh, so I started it like that. They saw my band play at uh, some fest. And then all right. started like that. And I started hanging out with them, going down there and learning some of the stuff, rehearsing and start doing stuff. Some tours, like in the beginning with the Japan right away. Oh, you did? Right off the bat? Yeah. Not, I think you, it was like right around that time. Was your band stylistically somewhat similar or was it totally different? My band? Band? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like three-piece power pop stuff. You know, at the time it was more Nirvana-y, okay. you know. Uh, and that, so maybe some of the stuff sort of lend itself towards that. But uh, I was always a fan of Enough's Enough and all those bands, the power pop stuff, you know, as I think you are. Like yeah. the Raspberries and, you know. I love it. Well, you know, but you, uh, one thing that kind of got overshadowed when you're playing in the band is that you're, uh, you know, a really accomplished guitarist. And a lot of people from the LA scene probably knew you as a guitar thing, right? Because you, you were MI grad. Yeah. Yeah. So with the GIT, that was fun. Awesome. Yeah. Were you playing around there quite a bit? Yeah. You know, when I was going to school there, uh, I really didn't go out much. I just kind of, I did. I mean, I went out a little bit, but I was just home all the time, just playing guitar. Shredding. For some reason and then just uh i would work in the clubs like doing like setting up stuff and like you know there was a club called club exposure 54 back then and they would have to change over from this big huge like open space bar to like the theme of the night whatever it was i think love hate used to play there all the time oh, set up this tent in the back with all this so i was like just helping like set everything up um it was like, I met a couple people who used to do that. There's other people that used to do that with me. This guy Loomis, you know Loomis. I don't. From the Jackass movies. Okay. Um, and um, this guy Jack, he was friends with Weezer and uh, those kind of guys. Uh, would were part of that crew, you know, go up and set everything up. And I mixed in some some rooms. I worked for this guy named Yowza. You know, Yowza. I Methadone do. cocktail, like a I big mohawk. Okay. Yeah. You know? I, just, I don't, but no. Nope. Long time ago. I mean, it was what? like what? 75 years ago. With a name like that? I should know. Right. So. And he used to do like, you know, sound for happening, Harry and. Oh know, yeah. Sound. Yeah. And um, so but then I, then I put a band together with Scott Schreiner and Scott Coogan. Okay. Right. And. Um, You've worked with Scott Black. in a few bands, right? Scott Coogan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we kind of like went out there together and we, we he's from here, Chicago, yep. so we just went out there together and and uh, I had already gone to GIT and then he was going to go to PIT, so I just went back and we lived together for a while and um, played in that band Black Elvis, that's what it was called. Black so, Elvis, okay. Yeah, can't call a band Black Elvis anymore. Not anymore, no. Burned down the Foot Locker. <laughs> Jeez, right. <laughs> <laughs> are they having a lot of looting right now in Chicago? Sort of watching it as we're doing the interview, just because it's on the background. But I think I get excited because I'm like, oh, let's... but then I realize it's like a loop. It's like just they, this happened already. Right. Like breaking news. When I hear breaking news, I, I want to see like OJ. Oh. 
you know, right. I'm yeah. in the van or something or someone, you know, actually happening. It's like a loop of things that have been happening, but yeah, I'm just, it's in the background. Oh yeah. Chicago, they've been looting a little bit over here. Uh, I, it's too much work. I, you know, you could, you could change it to the NASA loop and at least watch the guys getting on the space station. Right. I did watch that. I thought that was fairly interesting. Yeah. And, uh, again, you're waiting for something tragic. <laughs> oh my God. No, I mean, I, I, maybe I wasn't. I'm yeah. saying there are people <laughs> who are waiting for one of the, the jets to, you know, kamikaze right back into a, right back down to earth oh my god no no don't watch the news while we talk man this is this is not good so um all right so you were in la you uh you had some exposure to some of the other shred guys right there wasn't that oh good? yeah 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 there's so many good guys there you know paul gilbert awesome used to teach there scott yeah henderson, great scott henderson's the best all the teachers were really good a lot of them were jazz fusion type guys yeah really rock kind of players but then there were a lot of rock players too like um um, I had some teachers that like Nick Nolan, he's really good. Um, and, what year, uh, what years were you there? I want to say, I want to say 86. Okay. Yeah. So, so Batten, yeah. Batten was just barely there. He was there. She was teaching yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, she's awesome. Did you take yeah. any classes with her? I don't, I don't know if I did. Man, I, uh, um, she's like I, my she's sister. She's great. I love her. Yeah. I love her. She's, she's, uh, she's really bet, good. And she's, have you watched any of her podcasts? She's got a great series. I've seen something. Yeah, she was playing. Yeah. The other day I watched her and she was ripping and um, some stuff behind her, like an elephant or something. I right. Know. Yeah. It's funny. yeah. She does videos of her own. And uh, sometimes she like that song that she's playing along to, it's called elephant stomp. It was so off okay, yeah. record, but she, uh, she's got a podcast an online sort of video series called something like, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, like totally uh, making fun of the old LA scene and uh -huh. she couldn't get away from that fast enough, but she sort of tips a nod to the, uh, that, uh, that LA thing. She's been yeah. here like almost, I don't know, 15, 16 years and couldn't get away from LA fast enough, you know? So yeah, it's, it's tough living there for that long of a time, but she was really good. I mean, I've watched her play a bunch. Yeah. Just, there were a lot, all the teachers are good. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I got to see stuff that I'd never seen before, like uh, Frank Gambale, that guy. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, man. Never seen anybody like sweet pick like that or anything like it's crazy. Chick Corea Electric Band, his vibe. Well, so um, I know that there was a Racer X connection. What was that all about with you? Oh yeah, Paul Gilbert used to teach there, and you know, I was competent enough to sort of tune a guitar at the time, so he just like asked me to, you know, tech, and I would go out there and set the amps up and tune up everything and the pedals ready. Yeah, that was. And uh, so I did, I did a handful of Racer X shows. And then, and then after that, I went on tour with Mr. Big for a while and, and did his, you know, tech for him for a little bit. But that's just a tough job, you know, a lot of loading, loading a big truck every day. Yeah, so. man. Well, and as a player, right? I mean, you don't want to have to set up somebody else's gear. Well, I was just happy he asked me. I thought it was great, but I was just a lot of work. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not just like, you know, if you're just not just sitting around tuning a guitar and going back and sitting on the bus, you got to tear all that stuff down, set it all up. And they had a juicer and Billy Sheehan's got like 10 bases, servo drives. Oh, wait, so you were tech, teching for like all the guys? He had his own tech, but I would certainly help out. But it was a, you know, it's a 20 foot rider truck every night. You got to right. unload it and load it Yeah. for however long that was. God. It was with a band called The Lost. Remember the, the, that band? I, I don't, I don't. The Lost. That was an opening act? Yeah. Okay. They were nice. Yeah. I, I, them, I don't really remember too much of it, but I mean, it's a while ago. That's can't right. remember anymore. So you had, um, you, had, you had enough of the tech in and decided what, what brought you back to, from, from uh, LA to Chicago? I don't know. I just, I just got sick of dealing with like, you know, every time I had to go out and move my car, I would debate on like, should I go to the store and get something or lose my spot, you know, or keep the spot and just like, you know, it's, it's just, everything's just tougher. Yeah. And you know, I lived in Hollywood. So just like traffic every day, you know, gridlock, you can't go anywhere. You can't just go to a store and go home without it being a huge ordeal. And I don't know what else I did, but I think I came home the first time because of, of enough's enough. They, you know, I went back to join. Oh, okay. I was in LA and then I, I left there to go join that band. So you got a call while you're in LA saying, Hey, the guy has yeah. to go do something else. And all right. So yeah. And, uh, and then you said you went to Japan right away. Was that your first yeah, tour? Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of tours. Uh, I don't remember, you know, 
there's a, there's a bunch of like uh, local ones and some UK ones, but I remember going to Japan, I want to say like 98 or somewhere in that. And I think I joined in 96. Okay. So somewhere in that late nineties. Man, you, uh, so the band had kind of, I mean, the real success was late eighties. That was the, when Fly High Michelle came out and the new yeah, eighty nine. Yeah. So you had, uh, there was enough time that went by that you've got sort of a dedicated fan base. They're all expecting, uh, well, actually at that point you were just playing guitar then. I guess you weren't playing, you weren't singing, right? No, I didn't start singing until like way later, like 2001 or two. Oh, wow. Okay. So what happened with that? Why did, uh, did Donnie decide to depart? I, I don't know. He just was sick of everything, you know, and I get that. And he, we had a tour set up and he didn't want, or he, I don't know if he didn't want to go or something happened, but he wasn't going to go. And it was like a day before. So Chip's like, you know, you, you, should we cancel or do you want to, you know, sing? And I'm like, me? You know, with, How do you hear like, you sing? Well, you're probably well, doing I mean, harmonies. Yeah, but, but, but it's like, you know, I don't know all the words and everything. And I don't have all the moves. The moves. The guitar stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's like, uh, um, so I, we got in the bus and I learned like all the stuff on the way to San Antonio. And then we opened up and it was with the Eric Martin band. Oh, awesome. right. He's awesome. Who, who is awesome. I love him. Okay. Well, He's so good. Yeah. One of my favorite singers. And I've known him for a while and uh, we went on tour with them and the whole tour was fine. And that was the first three piece. Was it? That was like 2003 or something. Eric Martin band expects enough's enough with Donnie B singing, right? Yeah. So he goes, we're Donnie. I'm like, ah, he's like, what do you mean you're singing? Right. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then I, and then we, the first night was the first time we ever played three piece, no rehearsal, nothing. And he was like, Sounds great. You guys can headline or open or whatever you want all the whole tour. He was wow. very nice to us. And we would switch a lot. Yeah. No so kidding. That was, that was really, you know, for him to say that, it was great. I don't remember what it sounded like, but it, it must have not been too bad. Yeah. No, I'm sure there's some old video from back in the day when you were doing that. Maybe. Yeah. It's That's hard a, to find those. Those are really, that was with Ricky Parent. And uh, it was like, you know, that goes way back. Well, there's a rabid fan base, though. I mean, there there are hardcore enough enough fans that have this stuff, so I'm sure we can find videos. But, but yeah, I I just remember seeing you guys play and thinking um, how tough it is, you know, coming in being a replacement guy. You know, Miles Kennedy. We've talked about that a little bit when Miles, you know, had to uh -huh. like do the quote unquote Creed thing. You know, it was kind of like Ripper Owens coming in for for Priest, right? You know, right. Every, it, you know, seeing Judas Priest without Rob Halford just doesn't work and mm -hmm. uh um even if he's a great singer you know and i uh you know i've been the sub drummer right for all these bands that have had iconic hits and there are really hardcore fans that get pissed if it's not the original members and so yeah. they pay, you know they pay to come out and see yet i would imagine you had some hecklers people that were yeah i still i well i used to yeah i mean not everyone's gonna be happy about it i mean that was chip's decision to do it and it sounded good so we went out and you know and continued doing it for i think like seven years okay that yeah and then i left and he came back donnie came back for like three or four years and then he left again and then i came back again for two two years or something like that so yeah when donnie came back you weren't you didn't just switch back over to guitar right you just left the band for a bit and no i don't remember why but i i just didn't want to do it or something or something was different so i i didn't think it, i needed to be there or so i don't remember what it was but i just uh he came back and they had another guitar player. You stick around and Chicago? Then, uh, Tori, the guy that, that Chip has now. Okay. No, but you, you stuck around Chicago and did you go back? Oh, to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what were you doing during that time off? Uh, I had a couple of cover bands. I played okay. in Trash Martini with Eric, who ultimately played with Enough's Enough. Eric okay. Donner. Yeah. I saw him play drums with you guys. Great we drummer. We had a cover band for, I don't know, like three, four years. Played you know, I don't know, 150 shows a year, but uh, just all, all over the place, all over the Midwest. And then after that, I had another cover band, my own one called Almost Famous. It was like a yeah. dance band, band. Right on. Like a dance rock pop band. And that was, uh, I think, a couple of years with that. And even, even when I was in those bands, I would go back and forth, play with Enough's Enough too. Okay. You couldn't yeah. get away. Yeah. It was, um, well, all right. So tell me about uh, the departure. Like what, what was the, uh, the final straw for you in Enough's Enough? And you feel oh, like free, the, feel free to throw in your chip chip impersonation. Oh, That's really good. The last time, you mean? Yeah. The the last time was like, 
I just didn't, I just, I don't know. I lost the kind of, like, I stopped believing in it. I just like lost the will to want to do it. You know, I just wanted to always go forward. And I didn't think I was really helping that or getting anywhere with it. And every time we would think we were going to do something that wouldn't quite happen that way. And um, I just, people don't change. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I, I didn't know what, I didn't really know what I was doing there. I didn't know what the point was anymore. I kind of lost the point. Stop believing in it. I'm not digging and, for, uh, for dirt. I just think it's funny. The no. Way, you know, you're yeah. Changing. I just, for some reason, didn't feel the, the camaraderie anymore, like revolving drummers. Yeah. And, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's, I don't mind that. It's, it's just, uh, it, it just didn't seem like I was doing anything. Yeah. So, but and I also felt that he kind of wanted to be the singer. Yeah. Yeah. He, and that's where it is now. Right. So yeah. I must have been, you know, it's, it's kind of what I felt like uh, just a little bit of, you know, he wants to sing and that's fine. You know, it sounds like a haunted house when he sings. But, but <laughs> no. I, there were hilarious videos when you guys were traveling. Um, you were still fronting the band. I remember actually there was a gig where you, you were supposed to go to Portland and something happened, right? I think a booking agent totally hosed you guys over. Oh, right. Yeah. I remember that when I took the video in the car of him with the doll. Yeah. Her in the car. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think that was the first time I heard your impersonation too. Right? Didn't you have some chip going on there? I don't remember. What, I, I, I would remember you, filming. I remember filming him doing this. It was, this was his message to the club owner or the promoter. Right. And it, it's. I mean, it was pretty funny. I don't. I don't remember, but it's like you know, um, I was filming that and kind of talking and narrating. Yeah. Like what? Uh, do you remember what happened with the gig? Because you, uh, there are endless stories about booking agents and promoters screwing yeah. over bands, but. That one, I know, because you were driving a long way. Didn't you have some, like... Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. We were on this tour, and we were driving, and we pull into Portland, and somehow it got canceled, or the guy wasn't around, or something happened. So Chip was, like, basically there saying, hey, we're here to play. What's going on? And and, and uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen that in a while, but it's pretty funny. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure... I'm that, sure they made up, and he's been back there five times after that. Yeah, you know, they came through once, uh, opening for Ace Frehley, like a year or two ago. And uh, I missed the show. They played at the theater here in town. But um, yeah, I, I've not seen them play without you. So I'm sure, mm-hmm. you know, some a handful of my friends here have, uh, have certainly seen them. But to me, you know, just wouldn't be the same. But I knew Chip previously, too, because he was doing Missing Persons gigs. And mm-hmm. I was with Anna Motion at that point. We did... Uh, I think there's a segment of that that you have on your, <laughs> I used to be an enough's enough song. Right. So right. yeah. It, we're, Animation. <laughs> he forgot the name of my band. That was awesome. But uh, yeah, he was character for sure. But mm-hmm. um, all, all right. So then post enough's enough, we had uh, an era that uh, you were kind of working with and uh, sort of auditioning for a bunch of bands from the era. I mean, your name is out there. A lot of these bands from the LA music scene. No, John and Monica. Yeah, well, you know, like if that's good or bad, right? So I don't know. You had a tenure with uh, LA Guns, which I saw you play with, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I saw you with Tant- Tantric. That was yeah. a, a later later era band. But uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you got a recommendation to uh, audition with Rat, and which I've seen the videos of your solos. Yeah. yeah so how'd the LA Guns thing come about? I just know them from Enough's Enough, and they asked me you know they were looking for somebody after uh, michael grant something happened who gave you the call uh, um their manager called me okay All right that's they're not gonna just call me themselves yeah of course not but if and, they had um, what would philip because if phil called you how oh johnny we'd love to have you <laughs> we'd love to take you around the world we love you love you <laughs> um that's how I, it should uh, have gone <laughs> what are you doing for the rest of your lives? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> this is a long distance call. <laughs> um, so it's like you're from England or something. <laughs> he, uh, uh, no, so they called me and, then, you know, something happened. Michael Grant, he was wearing too many of Phil's hats or he got fired for something like that. So, are those mine? Are you wearing them again? <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I didn't really even think about it because I thought it'd be a great opportunity. I like them. It's not really my style of music, but I was like, you know, playing and doing playing like five days a week. So yeah. it wasn't, you know, it was like I was just sitting, sitting around. But at the same time, it, uh, 
I thought it'd be pretty fun, and it was. It was fine. It's just not really. It wasn't really my style of music, and I got a little bored. I don't know. It's, it could have been me. I, just, I don't. I, I don't see you being a rhythm guitarist in a band. I'm yeah. okay with that. It just. Yeah. I. I don't know. I still to this day. You know, maybe if I would have tried a little harder. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did try hard. I did. I, I brought like two guitars. They weighed like a lot because they make you play less pause. Yeah. Can you please not play those stupid pointy guitars? <laughs> play Les Paul. It's a man's guitar, Johnny. <laughs> and um, so I had to play Les Pauls. And I uh, carry them around the airports. and Heavy guitar. Have it, yeah. Tone dialed in and shoving them into the overhead. Everyone's like, come on! <laughs> you know, I couldn't just ship them. Right. You know. Ugh. So I, I carry these guitars around, putting them in thing. I tried, you know, I got the songs down pretty close, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. What, I mean, it wasn't like one thing. And uh, I just got bored and said, I'm just, you know, it's not going to do it anymore. And were you, was there a break or you were not like on tour when you decided to back it up? Right? No, no, there was on break. Yeah, we were off oh. and it was, it had been like a couple of months and we were going to, they were going to go back out for a run. And I just thought about it some more and I just didn't want to do it. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah. I might, I might be depressed. Also, I ate like 600 Twizzlers. So that probably has something to do with it. At one time. Or is this part of the tour? Lately, I just, every night I've been eating because it's the commercials. They make you buy them. <laughs> Oh. Same with a Heath bar. Every time I see a Heath bar, I'm like, "That's a, I I got to get a Heath bar." You know, and you think they're gonna be like royalty bars, like Charlie Chocolate? You know, you open right. up and get gold foil. It's really not. They they used to be better. The, maybe the ones I had weren't. Maybe the the COVID or the floods <laughs> something going on into the chocolate distribution. But I, I, I just, it didn't, wasn't as fresh as it normally is. And the same right. with the Twizzlers. It was like hard, but I just kept eating them. <laughs> well, you can't get the Twizzlers from the, the truck stops. You can't get them out of the big open bin that's been sitting there for 10 years. I went to this Jewels. It's supposed to be all fresh. It looked like they were fresh. Yeah. I think I got a bad batch, but um, yeah. I've, been, I've been eating those a lot. And um, I got to stop that because you can't stop once you get going. Right. And, you know. You can't make good decisions either after a whole series of Twizzlers, but uh, no. so, all right. So, so that um, because of this uh, sugar induced decision, you left LA guns and, uh, and what was next for you? Oh, well, actually I knew it was immediately next. Cause then there was all, there was blabbermouth and metal sludge and all the other stuff that started coming about, right. People heckling that you left the band. Oh, um, that's actually never stopped. Cause that started back in enough's enough days. Right. So, yeah, well, someone, someone asked some, I mean, what was it? Someone asked Phil why I, I left or something and he told him what he thought and I made fun of it and then um, kind of corrected it a little bit. And then, you know, uh, yeah, they still, still go back and forth a little bit. I don't know. But I, just, I can't imagine like many people knowing exactly what's going on with that small click of the small group of people that go on those sites. But I mean, I thought it was funny. Yeah, no, there was there is enough heckling going back and forth that, um, you know, it wasn't the one that I'm thinking of was not necessarily enough. It's enough driven or LA guns. I saw several LA guns things, but uh, but the most recent was um, your tenure with Tantric, and so I. Uh, <laughs> oh God! Uh, yeah, I, no that that was that was a short time. I would have liked to have done it longer, but again, weird. Not really my style of music, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of really weird time times uh, changes and like uh, drop tunings and kind of, you know, uh, more involved stuff for, you know, what I wanted to do. But I mean, again, it was cool to go on tour. Yeah, you're still going. Sorry, my video stopped for a second. Uh, 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 hold on. There's somebody... Somebody just jumped in here. They said they wanted to say, hey, I'm actually, right, I'm right in the middle of the podcast. Can you stop? No, no, oh, I guess they want to talk to you. Um, Johnny, I, this is screwed up. There's a, some guy, apparently he was the previous drummer from White Lion. So he wanted to say, hey, hey, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I heard you had some shit that you wanted to say about me. Is that right? Oh, no. Uh, Troy, is that you? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that voice. That's, that's pretty close. Yeah, I was working on it. Sorry. Unbelievable. I just clicked back over. I just saw this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, do I need one? Hold on. I'll find something I can put on. Um, yeah, man. So we were on the road and I thought everything was cool, right? I was dealing with the booking and handling the money and all that. And then all of a sudden, gig just ends up not working out. Oh, geez. Yeah, well, yes. here's the thing about that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so good. This is, is that why you left Tantric? Because you had to wear this on stage? Every time after a show, that would go on, come off. <laughs> okay. It just goes on a hanger. Yeah. This is the perfect pose. If I can use this screenshot to promote the rest of my, uh, my uh, All Access Live shows, I think we're good. Yeah. God, that's sexy. I wonder, is this why you were single as long as you were? No, this happened after. Okay, all right. So tell us, tell us the Tantric gig. The um, uh, Tantric, you had, uh, I saw you oh. here, again in Portland. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you had uh, Hugo didn't even make it out of the pizza joint that we went to dinner afterwards, right? He, uh, mm. he, he passed out in the side of somebody's van and, uh, uh, he was really tired, you know, from all that touring right. it takes a lot out of you playing it in does. front of people for 30 minutes. That's, that's right. I think it was a peanut allergy or something like that, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, you, you missed that no, gig quite a bit. That, I mean, I was asked to do it at the last minute and it would, like I said, the stuff was fairly involved. And I was, you know, I, I, I appreciate it. And I said I would do the gig. So it took me like two or two days, maybe I had to get my stuff together and then go out to Bayou. Yeah. Right. Or in yeah. Seattle, I think. Right. Yeah. And. Um, um, so that was like the first show? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. They have those rehearsal rooms as part of the, what is it? You know, I'm talking about the rehearsal rooms and then they have a stage. Right. It's like a rock room, but they have all these rehearsal rooms connected to it. That must have been Seattle. Yeah, we, you were in Boston in oh, the okay. ballroom when, when you came here to Portland. Okay, right. Uh, those were the first couple of shows, though. But, yeah, I was still kind of learning the songs and, they're, you know, trying to remember everything. And they're all sort of similar but separate. And, uh, you know, we turned around for a while, what, like a, like a couple, like a month and a half or something. And, and then there was a second time, like a, a second leg, and we were doing that. And... Uh, of course, someone asked me at one of the after one of the shows how I felt about it and how I was how I liked it, and I said it was fine. I guess I'm not really locking with the drummer too much though, because the meter is a little weird, and uh, some sometimes maybe it's just me the way I play, but we don't lock a lot. But I guess it's fine. So that guy was friends with Troy, okay, and friends with someone else. Um, he went back and told him, and then which is fine. Yeah. I would have told him that too. Sure. And then, and then he, he was, being, so I didn't know this. And I go back to the room and it's at night and uh, it's, we're sharing a room and it, he's really like, um, Oh yeah, Johnny, I talked to you about something. <laughs> I can't, I can't do the voice. Sorry. No, no it's okay. Um, we, we, we... No. So basically because I said that, he said that was a dick move and that's my boy. And he told me this and I'm like, that's fine. I'll tell you, I've asked you before over and over. I said, there's parts that we're not locking on. Can we just go over these and you never want to do it and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I was just calling like it was, and he got really mental, like Cape fear. Oh, and uh, it's like run, you know, punching the air. Fucking, oh, I can't wait till this <laughs> tour is over. Someone's oh, going to go hot. Oh, I can't wait till this is over. Oh, this is on the leg. You're halfway through the tour. Yeah, be so much oh. better touring without guys like you in the band makes everything difficult and, you know, mm. just totally keep went nuts. And then I was like, hey, you know, well, blah, blah, practice. <laughs> and then uh, I was like leaving the room and I had my guitar and my bag. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? Why don't you just get out of here? And he grabbed me by the throat, pushed me out of the, out of the room. And I had my hands full. So I kind of like went like this and grabbed me and he slammed the door. So I'm like, you know, this guy is like such a. So I went downstairs and I'm like, you know, you guys, I'm just going to leave. So I think there's like a week left or two weeks left or whatever. It's like, just, you know, fuck this guy. And then, wow. and then they're like, no, 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 we'll talk to him. And he came back down and he's like, I, I apologize. You know, I wasn't over it then, but I am now. So I apologize. And let's just get through this. And he was like, totally normal. Like went from that to that. 
And then, you know, he just wants to make the piece to, you know, but yeah. You know, and then we played for another week or so and it was weird, but fine. You finished it out. Okay. Right on. Yeah. That's tough to do after getting choked. Yeah. Out. And then he, he shorted me $700 and I tried to call him and get it back and I never got it again. He said, that's all that was left and you're not getting that other money and blah, blah, blah. And, oh man. How does that work out on a gig like that? Are you, you get a guarantee where you're supposed to have a, like an advance and, and then you get money afterwards? Or, I, mean, I don't think at this level. No, I hadn't gotten paid the entire time until the last day he held all the money. Oh my God. What do you do yeah. for, I mean, you just get a per diem? I don't remember. Okay. I, I hope it's cool to ask. I mean, I don't, I don't even remember what that one was. Maybe, maybe there was money from the last tour or something that I had. I don't remember what it was, but I, I know that I hadn't gotten paid and we we're going to get caught up on the last, on the last day. And then I didn't get paid the full amount, which is whatever. Yeah. And, and you know, then I, plus I just didn't want to, I didn't like him anymore at that, at that time. Just I, when you, when you see someone like something about someone that you're always, you know, like, cause I got along with him before I stayed at his house. He was nice to me. We've done things. We've, I've known the guy for 25, 30 years. Yeah. But when you see a side like that of, of what he feel, you know, cause he feels that cause I called him out on his tempo it go mental like that and not take any personal responsibility for it. Well, what do you want me to do? I can't really help you. Right. Wow. Man. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't mean to get, no, that's, th that's not a big, I don't even care. It's like, it's not, it wasn't even a big deal, but I mean, that's I, exactly what happened. Okay. I, I had seen the metal sludge stuff and there was a funny banter back and forth. And, and yeah. so, you know, when I, when I brought up the heckle, I, I didn't realize there was, you know, a choking involved. Oh, and then, then later I in thought after I left the band, I thought he was fired for embezzling band funds because that's what I had heard. Okay. But, but then I was told he quit on his own before he could get fired because he was questioned about it and couldn't produce these road reports, okay. which is just like a te little technical glitch. And he wanted to sue me for, for it. Defamation? For sl for sl yeah, slander. Okay. Um, which um, I have way more jokes about scarves and uh, body spray. That would be more of like, I think, I don't know if that would be called slander or just sexy. <laughs> oh God. What's the deal with the scarves? I, I, I guess he, he, he's, he had that accoutrement, but so did Chip, right? Chip was a scarf guy and a feather boa. Like what's, the, and maybe this Chip is something more, about you. More of a blouse guy. <laughs> okay. Scarves. Yeah, Troy Patrick Farrell is more of a scarf guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think you uh, you have a tendency. That's like a rock thing, right? These guys with the scarves and stuff that the cut off gloves. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it works for Steven Tyler, you know. But I, that's uh, where it all comes from, right? Yeah. The seventies kind of front yeah. man rocker type guy. Yeah. Leather jacket, cool looking. Speaking but, speaking of uh, of that uh, glammy style, do you want to talk about Charlotte? This one. Yeah. Look at this one is that how you refer to your girlfriend? She, she's uh, just uh, ready to go. This is your she's bass player. Nunchucks, yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice the nunchucks. All right, hanging over the Beatles ready, poster. Ready to go. Awesome. Yeah. Got uh, a game of death ones. The uh, oh, I completely forgot about this too. Your martial arts background. Well, right. so, so you've been yeah. you've been in martial arts for a long, long time. Well, lately I haven't really been working on. I'm so out of shape. I did some gardening the other day, and uh, it's really it's dangerous. It's, you got to stay in shape. You got to continue to work out. And I just, I guess I've been lazy. This whole quarantine thing is freaking me out. Yeah. But, but no excuse. I mean, I just sit. I sit a lot and play guitar or I'm on the computer or something. That's safe. You need, That's you need more, you know, more exercise. You saw gardening does to like Brian May. You know, you, you can't do that, man. So poor Brian May. It, like, didn't, didn't, he's didn't great. Really, he's been doing like a lot of videos that, that are really good. After Showing the heart attack? Time. What's that? Didn't he have a heart attack in the garden a couple weeks ago? He did. He did. Yeah. Well, I don't think, yeah, something happened to him. It freaked me out when I heard that. Yeah. You got to be he's careful. He's okay, though. Yeah, he's okay. They put a stent in. He's fine. But I'm just saying, you know, ease up on the gardening. But what's that? Yeah. So tell me about Charlotte. So you had a band, the Socialites, you started, right? Yeah. I couldn't find a bass player, you know, that would show up or uh, didn't have a music man bass. <laughs> right. Or that's, uh, that's, that's a requirement. Know, problem, some problematic, not learning the parts. Right. So everything else is tracked. So I just tracked the bass and uh, got some samples and, um, 
I mean, when we were playing as a three piece there, the kids were coming up there, like taking pictures in the front row, like pulling the arm off. Oh God. Um, some of them actually have co- full conversations. Oh yeah. Like with, talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which um, I thought was epic. Didn't you get her because you didn't want to have to pay another bass player? Dude. That too. Yeah. It's yeah. cheaper, cheaper gig. Does she ride yeah. passenger so you can ride, you can drive in the carpool lane? Yeah. Yeah, I put her in the front seat. Good man. I used to have I used to have the both seats go so I could just lay down in the. But uh, she gets car sick. Yeah, people think I'm joking, but this is true. Like you've actually had her on stage playing bass for you, right? Yeah, the whole thing's just tracked, and, she, and the bass parts are there, and um, the bass over there. Just, you just blow it up. Yeah. Plug it in. <laughs> An inflatable. And, uh, perfect perfect bass notes every time yeah it's and so it's just you two you don't have a drummer yeah and a drummer yeah uh, okay, real, a, live, a, real person. a live drummer right yeah. not eric, not eric donna though no eric plays too much to play with me he, that okay. plays like six seven days a week you know? okay yeah he doesn't need to play he's, he does well he plays all over chicago maybe you can get brad elvis if he's got any open time you know but uh you know he's <laughs> He's not gigging right now. So uh, he's always busy with the romantics. He's got his, he's got his thing going. They're playing a lot, man, but yeah. handcuffs too. But yeah. Um, the, uh, okay. So it's the hats that Johnny wears, he's uh, an accomplished guitarist. He's been singing for this band. He's got the socialites. He's a, uh, a martial arts expert and then a magician. It sounds like a lot of stuff. When you it think does. Of it, itemize it, but it's really, it's really like a bunch of nothing. Well, you're not doing them all at the same time on stage, right? You know, you're not bringing out the magic tricks and the nunchucks. And- no, I, I have done that at times. Yeah. But, um, um, at Brower house, it's a little theatrical that way. Oh, yeah. Brower house. Yeah. Right. That, yeah, honestly, that might be the next thing, right? When, when COVID lifts, you get back out to the venues, you can do your magic tricks and like the one man, like the Smothers brothers or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I've seen you do the one man band show for sure at the retirement community. Right when you were, <laughs> I, I'm gonna be living her. Um, <laughs> it was the greatest. No, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess you know, the, I don't see too many people do the one. Is it is it cool to watch one show like people, one person doing all that? I guess, I guess, like a banjo and a cymbal. Yeah, only if if there's a banter that goes along with it. You know, mm-hmm. your heckle that I saw, you uh, you called out certain people in the audience. You know, in a kind of a less than politically correct way, and I thought, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they weren't listening. They're yeah. like. Hey. The kids at the hula hoops. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, every summer I played there. I will probably won't be playing there this year, but I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. Six feet apart. You know, if they put those little carpet squares out there, you know, they keep the kids separated, then you're good to go. That was funny. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there'll be a lot. Of, yeah, that's that's a lot of touching and kids and yeah, view it. This, I don't know. Everything's just so screwed up right now. I, it's, uh, but uh, but yeah, that was a pretty good. That was the splains right over by the first McDonald's. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you mentioned that. You you mm. said anybody seen the movie, and it was just crickets. <laughs> but I, yeah, I could like, stop. why why is he here? What time? What time's he leaving? Put uh, the blues band back on. It was such a Spinal Tap show, but it was. I I remember grabbing a, a rental car because we had a show. I think the next night, and mm. uh, and I was so excited to see the Johnny Monaco show, and uh, you kept saying, "Listen, it's really not a big deal. Really, it's not going to be a big deal." And. Uh, I had more fun just watching your hackle with these, these little kids and the one African-American guy out there. You kept trying to play I Shot the Sheriff. <laughs> oh See, I was ahead of my time. I, I Trailblazer. <laughs> oh, man. So, remember but, the guy that wanted to fight me in the bar? I remember. Like, <laughs> yes, I remember. Why was that? Because there was, I think, was it? Because uh, I made a Bill Cosby joke. Oh, it was the, the dollar bill. You said something yeah. about it. Yeah. I was going to be on the cover, Bill. I was going to be on the front of that dollar bill, Bill Cosby. It was something like that. Right. And, and he got she, he got offended, or his girl. He was with a girl. Right. And she and he got he got a, was in my face about it or something. And then they were like holding him back because he was going to wanted to fight me. <laughs> I, I had like a couple of drinks. <laughs> I ah, care. Like why? Ah. And then he, you called him out again on stage when you went back on. I thought that was great. The. Uh, I, does this happen to you a lot? The, I'm afraid that when I'm not around, you might just get, you know, attacked several times a no, week. I think I was crazy. I don't even, it wasn't even like directed towards him or anything. It was because his girlfriend laughed. Yeah. Hysterically at everything I said. He was that I, happy about that. Until you made the Cosby joke and then they said, that's not funny. 
Yeah, right. Said, they were both not, laughing. Actually. You said, what's yeah, not right. funny? Was it the, that it was that I said something about Bill Cosby? It was, it was the date rape thing or something else? And then that's when things went right. off the rails. <laughs> right. Well, I was yeah. just asking your question. Yeah. Some, yeah. No, nothing says humor like date rape and, you know, racial inequality. I'm not the one who did it. <laughs> right. Just reporting. <laughs> God. But yeah, he was not happy about it. And then I was like, kind of like pissed off after that. And then I finished the rest of it out. And um, I won't be, yeah, not going to be there this year, but I don't know what's going to happen this year. Did you get called back? You got to do the show after I left? I, I have played there every summer. Yeah. Okay. I there was one, one or in between there. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of thought you might have cost yourself the gig after the heckle, but no. No, they, no. They, they, they expect that. Yeah. They're like, we really like what you did with the people and we want you to come back and maybe try to alienate yourself a little more. <laughs> but it's a little overcrowded as it is. Right now. Yeah. It's good to thin it out. You can, yeah. you know, you can promote social distancing right there. Yeah. yeah. The kids love All you. my shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So how are you going to do this now? If you're going to go back and play these shows, uh, you know, you reunite with enough's enough, but have enough. Cause I think there's a capacity that uh, Illinois is requiring, right? So if they're going to have gatherings in, in crowds, they can't have it more than a certain amount. So that shouldn't affect their draw. Oh, okay. Yeah. But if you go back and you play with enough's enough, you think you'll be okay for local shows? Oh. Bro, we've had enough. It's good for our name out there, bro. They're saying we have had enough. We've had enough. <laughs> you listen carefully. It sounds like they're saying we want enough enough. <laughs> Just let it go. It'll be fine. We've had enough. Thank you. Um, yeah. I don't know what the bands are. I mean, you know, it's going to come back. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a world where I don't see LA Guns touring in it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back, Johnny. You'll see. <laughs> Wrong on the number. <laughs> and uh, I just, um, I'm waiting for the day when everybody will come back to the, to the places of yore. Yeah. You know, what, was, what was the term that I was talking about earlier? <laughs> you're you're going to oh, harken back. To... I harken back. <laughs> yeah. I Sorry. Harken no. back to it. <laughs> that um, was, that's a Brad Elvis original. Leave that one alone. I've heard someone else use that term too. Um, unless you're holding a brandy and you're in a smoking jacket, it doesn't really work for me. Right. I, um, but yeah, it's going to come back and everyone's going to come out. Um, this, it's going to be the same thing, you know, we right back to being on the road and playing those clubs and say, the people will come out and the shirts and the, you know, you're, you're in a band, you know, you, you tour around, you see them all. And, if not, I'm here in Chicago. When I remember, I brought my motorcycle out there. I do remember. Yeah, I do. We, we played in a. What was the little the it's Amish? Skokie, I want to say. Skokie. Yeah, Skokie, Illinois. Right, that was like the Amish community, right? So we well, had this... no, it's Jewish, but uh, the Amish people live on the outskirts of town. Okay. They're 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 you know ahead of their time with the social distancing. That's the true thing. Yeah, they, yeah. No, I uh, I can't wait to get back to Chicago. But in the meantime. You know, you can use the uh, the internet thing to do your magic, right? You can do your, you can stream your magic shows. I don't know what to do anymore. I, you know, I, I've been working on a few things. I wanted to do a live stream. Yeah. I don't know if if the streaming if it works. Like if it's not in person. Right. Oh, you mean magic or music or what? Just. I mean, I, I mean magic more so, but I mean yeah. even the music stuff. I mean. When you're in a room and there's people and it's loud and everyone's hanging out and doing stuff. Yeah. And there's a band playing a cover tune. It kind of makes sense. But when it's just that you're sitting there and you're playing a cover tune for somebody and it's just kind of sterile and there's no, it just kind of loses the point of it. If the point is just to stay relevant or get tips and it's just like American girl or whatever, then I guess that serves its purpose. But I, that doesn't really interest me. I wish it did. I wish yeah. I could say like that would interest me to do that. Because it probably should, but um, you said you were working on a streaming thing. What do you What do you plan on doing? I was just going to put like a little, not a show, but like you know, a list of songs together and then play those songs. And I don't want to play like just the standard stuff that are that you always hear, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the point of that would be. There's a lot of people doing it good, or some don't. And it doesn't right. seem to matter. It does. Anybody's like, now I'm going to play this one. Or sitting or singing into the. They're in the kitchen. They're singing along. It's the speaker in the background. It's all right, now this one, I don't own the rights to these songs. Really? 
No kidding. I <laughs> thought Bob Dylan lent those to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, out there in Crystal Lake. No, I just, uh, I, I, I just can't find a good reason to do it. But yeah, so I'm working on this uh, set that I think would be cool with some guitar stuff, um, some Beatles tunes, and um, a couple of my original songs, and just something that I would think would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if it will be, but we'll find out, I guess. But if I ever get to doing it, I've been really taking my time because, you know, the riots now. The COVID. That's, that's holding you back? Yeah, it's, it's um, the whole um, quarantine. Yeah. It's everything up. Yeah, right. You uh, you plan on throwing like a PayPal link up when you do your stream, and hopefully get a few uh, donations. I mean, I guess that's the way that that you do it now. And, yeah. Uh, I don't feel. I mean, if it's something, if you're putting out something and you're actually working and you're doing something, I I, I get that. The the payment seems fair. Yeah. Um, if people if people feel that that, that what they're seeing is cool and they want to do that, that'd be awesome. Then I th- I think you need to add the extra flair in. Then you need the nunchucks, you need the magic, you have a little comedic thing. You know, it's got to be part of the show. I don't know. I you know have never done a stream before, so I don't know what it's like or what's going to happen. Well, you're you're doing one now, but this is uh, I'm this not is the bo- first one. <laughs> no, really, I yeah. uh, I'm I'm grateful that you uh, did your first stream with me, man. That's uh, you want to try yeah. a little magic out, see if it works and translates on the live stream. Oh uh, boy, what do I have around here? Um, you can make Charlotte disappear. That would be yeah, just, like just out of, there. You go. Go on. <laughs> nice. That's all it takes with the camera. Nice. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could think of something here. How long? How long have you been doing magic? Is that a thing you like? Kind of grew up with. I mean, I used to, yeah. When, when I was little, I did a little bit, but then there was like a huge gap where I didn't. So I can't really say. And you know, I've seen hardcore kids that start when they're like twelve get really good. Yeah. Not that I can't do that. I'm not that good. I, I, but I've seen, I've seen it, you know, um, took a break for a while. And then when David Blaine started getting uh, popular, I think I picked it up a little bit again. Cause I thought it was stuff he was doing was really good. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what do you think about his, his show? His, his thing. I like him. He's yeah. cool. Have yeah. you ever seen him live? No. How about Chris Angel? Live shows? Oh, Why don't, like Chris Angel always did his, you know, the Vegas, yeah. he had the Vegas I mean, show. I don't really, I don't really like Chris Angel as much. Why is that? Cause he, I don't know. Cause he looks like he should be in the bullet boys. <laughs> oh, right. He no, does. Not. No, he does. Um, though. You're right. No, I don't, I don't know. I just, I guess his stuff was, I felt to be kind of too unbelievable. Like, you know, it can't be done right. physically. Like but I mean, but, but the David Blaine stuff is just, I think he's more, you know, I'm sure Chris Angel is a good sleight of hand too, because they all, they're all professionals, but his stuff just seemed a little too fantastical, but I know the new stuff, fantastical, but I knew that uh, the new stuff he was doing is, is, I guess, pretty cool. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember the first time I saw the David Blaine thing and then there are some guys that actually do a kind of a, a tongue in cheek parody of him right there's some YouTube yeah, I've videos seen that. yeah, yeah those guys are great but uh yeah, yeah blaine blaine thing seems uncanny but you have well, he a lot of like you know uh houdini stuff where you know it's holding your breath and being underwater and and again those things i guess could also be said that they're impossible but the way he does i'm like it just i for some reason makes it more believable yeah no I, some again. of those stunts you know some of those really insane ones I, there were a handful of people that asked questions before you do some magic here. And I'm guessing Mickey might be your girlfriend. Oh yeah. Yeah. She yeah. talks about how cute Johnny Monaco is, which is great. Oh, yeah. the, the, uh, she's the only, she's uh, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> Mike may, Mike may has a question for you. He says, uh, Johnny, when you auditioned for enough's enough, did you have to show, show chip that you can march like him? The March. Um, it, it wasn't, it was required that he be the only one marching. Oh, oh. okay. So the marching it's... was um, reserved it's... for him and uh, the six cops trying to keep the looters out of a white castle. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. And, uh, oh, you know, Alex Columbia says, this is not Donny V. This is not the singer for enough's enough. So I, I, I maybe I, did I, uh, did I misadvertise this? Did I say he probably that? drives around in his car with his mask on? <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Who said that? 
um, Alex Columbi. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think he uh, he's writer for Metal Sludge. It could be. Oh, but, uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, it's okay. I thought it was Alex Masai at first, but that's not right. That's not right. So, or uh, Alex Skolnick, and one of those metal shredders, right? I thought Alex Skolnick, <laughs> right? Let's see some magic. Do you have any of that that you can actually do here? On, um, on yeah, this? I could try something. Okay. Um, but you can't reach out and grab a card, so I can try. You, you want me to pull one out? You have to pick on right. anyone in here. All right. Got right. it. Yep, I got it. This one. Yep. All right. that, that's it. You gotta put it in your hand. Do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you what it is? I'll put it right there. Oh, it's stuck. Wait. Um, no, just don't tell me. Okay. I'm just trying to get it to stay. Okay. okay. I'll put it in the stand. All right. Can you put it up so that I can see you, but you can't? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, okay you got it memorized? I, I, I got it, yep. Okay. All don't, right, I didn't don't, look. Don't hide the cards. I want to well, make sure that... I, I, I didn't look. Did nope. Let's hear on the six. It wasn't this one, right? It was not, nope. No. Just to make sure. It's not yeah. that one, right? That is it. No, it's not. It is. Sorry, I, I, it's hard to do it out. Here, I'll just try that again. Okay. It's hard to do it without being in frame. I have to, I have to stay in frame the whole time. I have to that, stand up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking you out All of right, context. So tick went out. Right. Here's whatever this one is. Okay. You got it memorized? Yep, yep. All right. I, can't, I keep dropping the freaking <laughs> This is actually a better show than anything you might do as magic. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see you doing this on stage with your guitar too. Is this what happened with LA Guns? Is this why it didn't work? This is no. This is my rad audition. Oh God! Did you end up doing an audition with them? Yeah. Oh, you went out to LA and did it, or? Yeah. Okay. I, I um, I, I got my hair caught in my guitar case when I was trying to open it, and I fell backwards into Stephen Pearson's hand. <laughs> and, and he's like, no. What's wrong with this guy? Don't you give him any of my rolling rocks. <laughs> and I'm like, um, that did not. So you know what he said to me? What? He, you know what he said to me was really funny. Is I brought a delay pedal, and you know, for some of the songs. And he goes, "What would you do if I took that little white pedal and threw it down that hill?" <laughs> Piercy said this to you. To me at the, at the audition. I oh. go, I don't know. I guess go walk down there and get it. <laughs> <laughs> God, sounds like Stephen may have been. Cool. I liked him. He was funny. I got along with him right away. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. It sounded like he must have been liked me or something. What? He sounded like he may have been under the uh, under the influence, huh? Oh, I think that's just how he is. Just uh, uh, very happy. I actually, wore this shirt for the interview. You did, or he did? I did. I, just, I, did. Okay. I, wore, I wore this shirt. That's what cost you the gig, because they probably knew Carrie. You know, they didn't want to have the the conflict of interest. Did no, Carrie ever play I, with Rat? uh yeah yeah right i think so oh god man he kills it in the night ranger gig i love yeah, he's it really good really Legendary good he's played with everybody he's really good i mean side out guy I remember when we went out at the metal uh metal sludge tour no was there All one bands yeah what mm -hmm. okay and, and um dj ashbo was in the was he in the bullet boys was he in the bullet boys no He's in one of those bands. Yeah, he, well, he had 6 a.m., right? Then he did, of course. No, before all that. Oh, before, yeah. He was in the Bullet Boys. No, Love, a, Love for, Hate. You know, something else. But there was all these bands. Bang Tango was there. And, yeah. Oh, that's that was it. Bang Tango was who he was with. Was there. Yeah, and um, what else was on that tour? Um, but something happened in Texas. And someone called Mark Torrey and Haas in the lobby. Hey, Haas. Uh -huh. And he's like, were you calling Haas? He, he pulled a plastic spoon or a fork, tried to stab this 90-year-old man oh. for calling him Haas. Oh, God. Who are you calling Haas? No. Put down the string cheese, oh, sir. Oh, God. So they called the cops, and he got arrested. And they put, put him in uh, the clink. What? So we're all waiting for, it, for him to get out so we can continue to go on tour. Oh. And uh, he came back the next day and was kind of like all bummed out. We're all sitting around the pool, like ready to go. And then I started making jokes and everybody started laughing. Uh oh. Uh, that was funny. Yeah. Uh, you and Mark get along, yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Um, yeah. I've had he's, some. He's got a point to him where, you know, everything's fine. And one day and the next day, uh, the black dog's talking to you, you know, kill right. these people. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, uh, 
I've had a friend, uh, a handful of friends play in that gig in a, um, yeah, it's an interesting, you know, it's interesting recap on their tour stories, but that, that's for another another episode. All right, so you, are you reshuffling again? Is that we going to pick another card? Oh, no, I was just trying to think of something else that I could do that would be interesting to... to... A little magic trick that doesn't... All right, so All right. You take a card out. All right. All right. Take a card. Here's the card. Got it. Put it on my mouth. That'll make it easier. Okay, okay. got it. Here's the card, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll take the card and okay. put it in the deck. I don't know, like, where's the camera? Put yeah. it inside, like somewhere in the middle, something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, name a suit other than your suit. Um, hearts. Okay, hearts. Okay, watch what I do. I'll take it like this. Uh huh. And this deck shrinks. Okay. Oh. And you said hearts. Look yeah, at all right. the cards turn to hearts except for the one card. Oh my god! Wow, that is awesome. That is that, that work, that. man. You know what? You need a PayPal link right here. That was a, that's worth some some extra dough. I like it. That yeah. take that, Chris Angel. Magic. Interactive magic. Wow. That I yeah. Have learn, I have to learn a few. Like here, just I'll say stop somewhere. Okay, raise them up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Just okay. Say stop everywhere. All right, stop. See it? Yep. Got it memorized. Yep. Okay, so it's inside here. Okay. All right, think about your card. Okay. Um, it's a it's a black card. Is it a a spade? It is. It's a. Is it a small card? Oh, you know, it's a big card. No. I. I'm thinking like. Um. Not this one. Not that one. Yeah. And one more. That's it. Was that it? That's it. Two of spades. That's right. I wish I could do some more like, like, um, like something that would work better. No, I think this is great, Ben. I think, you know, what the, the good thing is, okay, you got something say else. Say stop. Okay. Oops, say stop. Stop. Oh, sorry. Let me shuffle them really quick. Say stop. Stop. Take your card. Okay. Don't show it to me. Okay. Inside. Okay. Uh, Queen of Spades. You got it. Those sort of work. Yeah. Yeah. It, well... This is a, this is a, at least you're going to be able to pass your time during quarantine until uh, the looting stops, you know? Yeah, I wish I, I, I wish I could relax and pass my time. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, you could do some stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. man. I, I love it. Yeah, that, you know, that's probably why things didn't work out with you with enough's enough. Cause you just had, uh, you had too many other tricks up your sleeve, you know? So I, I I don't know what's happening anymore. What's the, what's the what's the perfect gig for Johnny Monaco? If you're not fronting your own band and having success there, what's your dream gig? I don't I don't know anymore, man. I I would just like to do something cool with some guitar, you know, happening. And um, if if I heard something that I liked, I mean, obviously going on tour with a bigger act, being able to play to all these people, and that would be great. Like what Kerry Kelly's playing in Night Ranger, that would be fun. Yeah, uh, like a professional setup organization like that, where it's uh, good songs and um, it'd be interesting to play. And there's still some guitar stuff going on, but I don't, I don't even know anymore. I mean, what would be my, what would be my ultimate gig? That's a good question. That's probably why I, I don't really have a, an answer because I just don't really know. I, I guess if something came along that I liked, I would know. Yeah, you keep your hat in that ring. You try, you know, sort of shake the tree a little bit and see if anything pops your way? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I would like to, hopefully I would like to hear about some uh, opportunities or something that's happening and um, check it out. And, you know, I just don't know how to even go about doing that anymore. I don't, I don't even know, like, what do you do? You put stuff on the internet. You got, I got my, all my stuff's out there. Yeah. I guess if someone's looking, they know how to find me. So I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can promote more. 
you've got a lot of shred videos and then you've got a lot of pop stuff. I know in your, your stuff is comedic, you know, so that maybe the stream, the stream that you're putting together is going to be. That, that, think about it. It's like a crazy person. They're like, you know, there's like so many, <laughs> so many different things. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's, there's, but if he gets bored and wants to do this or that, so maybe that's bad. I don't know. I, you know, I Maybe it's better to focus on one thing. And uh, I, well, I, I consider it one thing, but it's like a bunch of little parts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you said that you could actually pull off the rhythm thing. Fine. I, uh, I just love watching you play lead. You know, you've got a really unique style to your lead playing and, uh, and you're a shredder. I, it'd be fun to watch you in a gig that, you know, would work out that way. Maybe, uh, you know, Paul Gilbert could bring you along and, you know, do some kind of dual. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's a, great. He's local, man. He's a Portland guy. So maybe, uh, you That's know, right. one of my buddies here, will uh, we'll put the bug in his ear and bring Johnny Monaco out with him. That'd be awesome. Yeah. He's really good. He just, he just did a stream the other day about uh, 20, like 50 animals, like a, mel- a, med- a medley okay. of 50 animal songs. Like about like, animals? Or? Yeah, 50 songs about animals. Okay. And these are ones that he wrote or? No, these are like in the jungle, the lion sleeps the night and, you know. And is he, he was playing like, them? Yeah, just like, um, I guess it's a medley. So maybe a couple verse chorus of each one. So yeah. all 50 like live. Oh, wow. With his wife, you know, like all, all through it. Wow. It was like a rehearsed, a well-rehearsed show, you know, yeah, which I'm sure it was. I didn't see it yet, I, but it was on uh, stage it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Stage. He, he's keeping himself busy, man. That's good. Oh, yeah. 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 I, uh, well, hopefully, you know, somebody out there that sees this might be able to go and, and uh, you know, put uh, put the feelers out for the right gig that lands Johnny Monaco. Cause yeah, that'd be you're, awesome. You're going to get something. You're going to get a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, you know, bang for your buck. You get the the comedy act, and mm. can you you can bring your bass player along too, and then you know you get two for one, right? So mm. you still have to buy her a seat on the airplane, though. Comes oh, apart. Oh yeah, you can put her in overhead, right? So yeah, right. You can put it in a guitar case. <laughs> Probably don't want to have like that soft. Don't, don't want to have that fall apart. But I can imagine going through TSA and having someone see that in the TSA checker. Yeah, so, well, I mean, how much worse can it get? Yeah, that's true. Oh my God, Johnny, I I love it, man. I really, really hope that uh, we get to see each other in person again on stage. Yeah, thanks for up. having me on, try yeah. chatting, and it's, I'll try to think of something more together for next time. Well, just make sure you, you know, stay away from the Louis Vuitton stores today downtown in Chicago. You know, I think, yeah, uh, looting is all takes a lot of work. You got to yeah. go down, or you got to park your car. You got to walk to get into the area. Right. You know. I just, I really don't have it in me and I'm, I'm watching it on TV and I just, it just seems kind of like they're doing it just, you know, they're taking advantage of the situation. They're not all out there because they're mad about that thing. Oh, absolutely not. No, I, I think there's a, there's a certain amount that are just, uh, just jumping on ship to. It looks like Bonnaroo. <laughs> it probably does. I don't watch it. I don't want to see. Uh, I, yeah, yeah Firefest for sure. Mm-hmm. No, turn, change the channel. Go back to the NASA thing. Watch the guys bounce around the ISS. That's a better thing. I thought that was over already. I thought. They, I thought... Well, they climbed out of the pod and they're in the space station now. But I think, uh, you know, I didn't. Hey, see anybody anything. can go to space. Yeah. These guys are breaking windows at Nordstrom's. I know, God. I know, man. It's crazy. It's I was good. in LA for the first riot. We drove around and watched it. Really? After the Rodney King verdict? Yeah, in Hollywood. Okay. They had all the streets shut down. Yeah, that was nuts, man. That's crazy. I was actually in Montana and watched the, uh, you mentioned the OJ thing too. I was watching that from Montana thinking, I really wanted to go to LA, but I was afraid, mm-hmm. you know, after seeing all that. So, but, uh, it's, too much. I mean, it's, just, it's just a lot of effort, but I mean, good for them. Yeah, good, good for them. Oh, God. oh my God, buddy. Thank you so much for being here. It's really good to Thanks. see you. I, I hope we can, uh, we can hang soon. You know? Yeah. I'll, uh, Me too. I'll get, get my hula hoops. Yeah. Hopefully everything gets back to normal and uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, man. Good stuff. All right, my friend. Well, listen, I will, uh, I, I, I'm not going to tell you to stay safe because that's, uh, that was reserved for, um, uh, I don't know. There was some other musician that was out there telling his, uh, oh, Stacy Blades. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's been uh, really nice lately. Like too, a little too nice. It's unnerving. You know, they're wanting to say hello. They got masks. You should say hello. Right. I, I don't, I wouldn't say hello to somebody in passing in a grocery store with or without a mask. I, I know. Now in the middle of a pandemic, they want you to go over there and start talking to them. 
Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you're you my favorite curmudgeon on the planet. It's, that's the best. It's too bad you're not about 50 years older. Then you get a pass with this, you know. So, but, uh, Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Johnny, I wish you the best, my friend. We'll Thanks. stay, we'll stay in touch. Here. You bet. And, uh, well, and let, me, let me know about your stream. I'll make sure that we can uh, promote that, you know, because we'll okay. get people, people watching your show. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta uh, do it. I gotta get it together and uh, finish up some stuff and have it ready to go. But thanks. You got it, buddy. I'll talk to All you right. soon, man. Have a great weekend. Uh, yeah, you too. Okay. Bye, guys.